I know I said this video was going to be the Emperor and which Roman Emperor I think he is, but I can't really control where the inspiration flows, and here we are. While I was brainstorming for a big new project, I got into a multi-hour long discussion about the purpose of the original Halo trilogy with Sam and a couple of other creators. And unlike a lot of the other videos like this that focus on the Chief and the Arbiter, I'm going to take a look at this from the lens of an English teacher that's really upset about her divorce and she's going to be looking at why the Covenant is actually the main character of Halo 2. Halo Combat Evolved is the easiest of all the games to view from an English teacher's point of view since it was the foundation for the rest of the story to stand on. Combat Evolved didn't need to do any one thing particularly well, it just needed to be fun, cool, and compelling. All three of those things are evident for even the most casual of Halo fans. But on a big picture scale, the first Halo game was designed to show how what was almost certainly a losing war, or at the very worst, a full-out slaughter of humanity from an alien federation. From the first few missions of CE, we see humanity barely scraping along, barely putting up a token resistance before legally distinct Doomguy shows up. Doomguy and the literal smartest AI within humanity then discover what the Covenant is after, the core belief system of the Covenant, and then figure out how to use that against them. The religious tinge wasn't fully there, but the terminology alone was certainly enough to give the Covenant at least a vaguely spiritualist element. Only the releasing of the Flood was enough to even slightly tip the favor in humanity's side, but that was essentially the equivalent of turning a 1v1 into a free-for-all lobby. The Flood were eating both sides. Halo CE also has one of the most perfect endings as we are left to truly contemplate how much of a cost there was for even a minor victory. Every single marine, every single ship, every single piece of ordnance outside of maybe a dozen men and the odd minor starcraft they escaped with just to beat a single strike fleet or strike group. Also, the legendary ending with the Arbiter and Johnson hugging is canon in my hand. I don't care how they survived, Chips Dubbo survived, so they survived. Halo 2 though is where we actually get a lot of the backdrop and the setting. Until Halo 2, there were really only four species in the Covenant that we knew of from the game perspective. Grunts, Jackals, Hunters, and Elites. With Halo 2, however, we're shown the true scale of the Covenant. The entirety of Halo CE within the opening cutscene of Halo 2 is just immediately put to shame. As soon as the opening cutscenes are done, we realize that the Covenant is infinitely more scary than we thought. Where before, they were an extremely brutal, extremely effective force of Elites and other versatile units, we're shown within minutes of Halo 2 that only one commander was involved in that campaign, and that the rest of the opponent doesn't operate like Thalvatomy does. That's the Arbiter, by the way. From the perspective of people who only played the games, the Covenant went from this massive star-spanning empire that had very well-thought-out supply lines, strike capabilities, and organized leadership, to be shown as a rambling spiritualist empire held together by faith alone. Not only is a religious zealotry just shoved directly in your face, we are shown the brutes and the prophets, prophets being the spiritual leaders of the covenant. Act 1 of Halo 2 is best described as the foundations of the Covenant being shown. They had been unified and galvanized for so long by faith alone, and the cracks in that facade are actually shown. We see that the Covenant is a paper tiger, specifically with how the masses of the Covenant are thrown into whatever Stalingrad or Verdun level hellscape with a smile on their face and the great journey on their minds. Before I move on from that, I think it's important to mention that the ending of Act 1 can best be described as the realization that the Prophets are not on the same level as the rest of the Covenant. They have been pulling the strings deliberately and masterfully for actual millennia. It's also shown very well that there are even levels within the Prophets themselves, as both Regret and Mercy try to vie for power, or kiss buttocks respectively over Truth, who does everything he can to bring whatever personality works best for the situation at hand. Almost as quickly as the facade of the Prophets being as dumb as everyone else is established, we the audience get to see that the reality is, at least Truth understands the reality of the situation. Neither Regret nor Mercy fully do, but Truth, by the end of Act 1, truly realizes that the Covenant needs a hard pivot to keep itself afloat. The Great Journey is almost complete. Humanity has at most a year left, and Truth is operating on a clock, and he knows it. Act 2 of Halo 2 is best described as the beginning of the end for the Covenant. 
Truth gambles everything on regret being killed and himself being established as some sort of a god figure. Truth knowing better than anyone on the Covenant, and truly outside of everyone on the galaxy, outside maybe a few Oni operatives, that the Covenant needed to switch from a theistic religious zealot army over to an imperial or dictatorial style of government. Truth had to essentially go from searching for the mantle, or the journey in this case, to the holder of the mantle, or the god who has seen or will start the next step of the great journey. Truth throughout all of Act 2 gambles everything on a shift in the Covenant towards himself as its leader, and using the elites as a scapegoat for this. For the entirety of the Covenant's multi-millennia spanning existence, the elites had been the concrete foundation that the entire great journey stood upon. And with the removal of the elites, Truth hoped to replace them with a more simple species. In Truth's eyes, the elites were too rational and effective for his covenant. The elites were perfect tools, but no longer did Truth need hammers and saws. His covenant advanced from using tools to using glue. Overnight, he went from skilled elite carpenters building the covenant to a bunch of brutes and jackals using glue and other various sticky substances to build shanty towns and mud huts. I think now is a good time to really state that the main character of Halo 2 is the Covenant. You could argue it's the Arbiter, but the Arbiter is just a playable representation of the spiritual and sometimes literal battle the elites had to fight once their faith and culture were ripped from them. Every single Sangheili was fighting an internal or external battle very similar to the Arbiter, just as the Chief was the embodiment of the human will to survive and adapt no matter what. The Arbiter is that exact piece for the elites. Taking it to 40k for a second, John 117 and the Arbiter are the symbols that Commissar Sebastian Yarek talks about during his War of Armageddon series. Those who go beyond being the symbol that people need, but to be a legend, someone who just the mere thought of can shift the tide of battle. And for me, Act 2 ends with this cutscene of the elites truly accepting their place within the stars. And after that millennia of failure and manipulation, they now have to repent for their mistakes as well as their fathers and their fathers' fathers. It's a beautiful picture of the already materialist humanity watching as an entirely different species went through the same spiritual revolution humanity has undergone at multiple points throughout Earth's history. Act 3 is the gambit of truth. We truly see just how much truth messed up and how he knows that he's a dead man. Truth and the Prophets overall made the really unfortunate mistakes of calling the Forerunners the Forerunners, and basing their entire religion off from them. As when the Flood really started kicking into overdrive towards the end of Halo 2, the Prophets had to ensure the people that despite this disease essentially wiping out the Forerunners, the Covenant was better than that and they would persevere. Despite High Charity, the Holy City of the Covenant being overrun in a matter of hours. The Covenant was already on shaky footing with the replacement of the Elites, and the religious end times of the Covenant happening at the same time must have essentially killed a large portion of the Covenant's control. It would be like if in our timeline, during the Black Death, a massive army of rats physically consume the Vatican City and pick it up and just move it to Madagascar. I know for this video I haven't focused almost at all on humanity, and that's for really good reason. All of Halo CE was focused on showing the sheer state of decline and borderline hopelessness humanity was facing. Master Chief in Halo CE was the only being in the entire galaxy who gave humanity even a fighting chance, and that was barely effective. Humanity still lost badly, but thanks to legally distinct Doomguy, it wasn't a complete loss. It was still 99%, but they got something out of it. Halo 2 in retrospect is all about the Covenant dying for all intents and purposes. The interpretation of a federation of super advanced aliens repeating almost to a letter the ancient history of Earth, with the various religious organizations falling after millennia or centuries of a stranglehold on a population. So for us humans, we don't need to visualize that since we've lived it so many times. But to show this from the perspective of the Split Jaws, it's perfect. This species that was just human enough, but also just alien enough for it not to be super ham-fisted. Sangheili represented the stoicism and honor that, specifically, the male audience loves from history. Looking back on history, it's always the most militaristic or spiritualistic empires that are the most compelling of topics for people. The ones that shove their beliefs and tax codes on those unfortunate enough to either speak a slightly different language to them, or maybe you liked a different color of chariot. So the sword-swinging, armor-wearing chads of the Covenant went from religious zealots to insurrectionists, essentially. 
Act 3 is essentially the first step in the Elite's Penitent Crusade. Part 3 is also about Master Chief getting the hell out of high charity with the help of Mendicant Bias, and I want to bring this up super briefly, but during the mission high charity, Mendicant goes out of his way to help Chief and Cortana. When Cortana mentions a particularly strong presence within high charity, that is Mendicant Bias beginning his quote-unquote penitent crusade. He is speaking to the chief, it is often mistaken by players as the grave mind, but the fourth voice that sounds very similar to the grave mind is mendicant speaking to the player and Cortana. Anyway, food for thought, back to the elites. Act 3 is the elites essentially severing their connection completely to the covenant. Much as when the body loses a limb, when the covenant lost the elites, the damage was intense. When the body loses a limb, we lose meters and meters of nerve connections as well as other necessary organelles and veins and arteries within it. Cutting off a leg forces the entire body to adapt, and the remaining prophets just did not understand that. They had wrongly assumed that they were cutting off a finger. They saw the Covenant as a hand. But the reality of the situation is that the Covenant was an organism. They were all independent symbiotic organisms working together to form one superorganism. And so the removal of the elites was on the level of losing a limb. 20 to 30% of the Covenant was replaced without the necessary rollout of infrastructure and regimental training. If the elites were a finger to the hand of the Covenant, it would still have been massive, but it wouldn't have collapsed the Federation like it did. But back on topic, the elites were a leg, and without the Prophets building a crutch or something to lean on before removing the leg, they crumbled. Resources and members of the Covenant organism that were in the leg or relied on the leg were forced to follow the leg. Again, the leg isn't just muscles. It's meters and meters of nerve connections, which I will use as the hunters for this instance. It also had other veins and maintenance personnel that came with them, certain engineers and drones, as well as the base nutrients and proteins within the legs, which would be the grunts and the jackals. Honestly, at this point in the script, I have no idea where to go from here. I read a comment this morning saying that my video organization is rough, and uh, yeah. You're right. Anyway, Act 3 ends with the Covenant being denied their great journey, a step that Truth heavily relied on. Truth saw the obtaining of the Index as his tool to Godhood. Whether he planned to fire the ring or not, that was his key to divinity. Tartarus was a terrible gamble in hindsight, but hindsight is 2020, and the Prophets underestimated both the Flood and humanity. To me, that's a literal example of the age-old adage of a plan never survives first contact with the enemy. A big component of the first act of Halo 2 was just how prepared and well thought the initial Covenant plans were. With massive initial gains, they were unable to make a hard pivot on the scale humanity could, but that could also be a product of how large and how poorly held together the Covenant is. The Prophets essentially have to wait for an entire generation of the Covenant to die before they can make a hard pivot. As if they go against what they just said, it will cause a little bit of heresy and apostasy like we've seen previously with the Covenant. Humanity, however, can react in whatever way is best and they can get creative since they don't have as rigid of a structure. That, and they're working with an empire of maybe one one hundredth of the manpower of their adversary. Who knows, maybe religion is necessary to unify such a diverse and numerous of an empire or federation as the Covenant. Before the video ends, I do want to do a quick recap since I feel like I went off the rails quite a number of times in this video. Act 1 is the Covenant religious structure being shown. We see Truth begin his plan to pivot towards himself or the Prophets' as deities as opposed to the quest for the Great Journey. Act 1 ends, and Act 2 begins with Regret dying and Truth being forced to advance his plan by an unspecified period of time. Act 2 ends with Truth going from a rock-solid plan to ending off with gambling super hard. Act 3 is all about the plan falling apart and Truth trying to achieve some semblance of a victory. Act 3 is also where the true depth of the removal of the Sanghili is removed, and we see just how dirty of a removal it actually was. Also, I'm working on something called Halo CE Abridged. Coming soon, maybe.